Hello and welcome back to Sunday Vibes, everybody. Great to see you. Welcome aboard. It's me and Mikey. We did ask Joe, we asked Obo, we asked Belinda. They were all busy. But it's great to be joined by Mikey. It yes. feels like an old school Sunday Vibes. We were both quite hungover. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a bit of an office uh, party yesterday. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you can tell, I can't. I'm a bit lost for words, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to be very heavily reliant on my notes today. Um, yeah, no, it does feel like a bit of a throwback. You know what I remember particularly was this time last year doing the not this time last year, but May last year, doing the end of season um, Monday vibes. Yeah, the, like the relegation battle, which was mad, and I was particularly hungover on that Sunday <laughs> and I arrived, and there was no one in this building aside from the news anchor for Sky News, and they turned the um the aircon air off. off so i came here and joe was just sat here in his swimming trunks because um, he was <laughs> just so else. hot so so hot um that was a struggle yeah. uh, today will be less of a struggle in that sense i Fingers think uh, although it, it is warming be, up outside it is it's warming lovely. up outside yeah it's lovely it's really really nice um and we've got a fun episode lined yes. up today like it is the international break so we actually thought you guys have probably been swamped with england squad videos from you know all, all over football youtube that up and coming creator joe tomlinson included. <laughs> yeah 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 we need to talk his back on the yeah. joe tomlinson channel Go check um it out. yeah it's it a really good video um so we thought we'd do something a bit different um you know ease ease yourselves back into um you know club football and and the kind of end of season um with a special yeah player of player of the season in each position you know, i think it should you know be quite good fun should be good fun i think there'll be lots of debate yeah um but yeah how are you doing anyway so i'm good I'm, I'm no 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 a little bit hungover as well but otherwise all good yeah looking forward to today's episode should we just crack on let's crack on man. okay there's a lot to get through so to clarify we're doing one center back we're doing a defensive minded midfielder we're doing an attack minded central midfielder and then all the usual positions yeah. left back right back striker the wings goalkeeper goalkeeper yep. and let's start with let's goalkeeper start with mikey goalkeeper. Yep. Cool. who were you who are you considering and who have you gone for? yeah there's there's quite a few outstanding candidates in this position um you know when you look at the premier league in particular like i think allison's always going to be in the conversation although i don't think he's had by his standards his best season even if he remains you know top well maybe the best goalkeeper in the world if not top two or top three um you know in terms of like what he's produced over the last few years in general and what he what he is capable of of producing um i think kaminsky and goal for for luton has been superb this year although his numbers have uh, they have dwindled a bit more recently i think if you know two months ago when you're looking at his numbers it was like this guy is is effectively keeping Luton in in the Premier League, um, but I'm not sure if he's had yeah he he's had his best kind of last month or so. Um, obviously, you're looking at Guillermo Vicario. I think Brilliant. one of the most transformative signings um, in in at any club in Europe this season. Unai Simon has had another superb season for Athletic Club, who are having a superb season you know mm -hmm. like they could make it into the champions league for the first time in 10 years um wow. and you know beat out potentially beat out a, a you know a pretty strong atletico madrid side if, if inconsistent atletico madrid side to that spot yeah, so it yeah it's like their best athletic side probably since the bielsa days really. yeah big maybe time. valverde the first yeah, time and, right, and yeah. probably and, and maybe playing their best football since those days as well um you know we may well you know you know talk about nico williams later in the episode um but I've actually gone for a goalkeeper who whose numbers have really, really popped this season and I think has maybe gone slightly under the radar because he's playing in a very dominant side and has, I think, in general, disappointed on the whole over the over the kind of two seasons before this. That's Gian Gianluigi Donnarumma Interesting. At, at PSG. Like He's taken I a just, bit of flack on Football Daily in the past, actually. He has, he has. And I think, like, you know... I think I w I've always been e I was always easy to criticise him. I think because I was a little bit salty about you know the Euros and everything. <laughs> where I where I think like he was probably a bit fortunate to get Player of the Tournament on the, on the back of you know two penalty shootouts. I think there were you know bit of recency <laughs> bias there. You bit, save a few penalties. And save a, yeah, I think so. Yeah, there were so many amazing outfielders at that tournament. Um, you know, thinking about Pedri, thinking about Raheem Sterling. You know, thinking about Maxi Maguire had a good tournament. Maguire had a t good tournament even in that. Italy side. I'm trying to think who was like Italy standout, but they were t a, Chiesa a number. Maybe, yeah. Chiesa was brilliant. You know? um, but I mean, look, that was three years ago now. Clearly, I'm still <laughs> We're not, all move I'm on. Still not over it. <laughs> still not over it with the next year is coming up. But I think that, you know, and I think also the fact that he was such a wonder kid, like, you know, 
really the first player of this generation of goalkeepers who have come through at a younger age than the previous generation. The first, you know, he really set the benchmark in that sense. So you, got, you know, he, you know, he did. I think alerted other clubs as well to the, the idea that yeah you can be 15 and, uh, 16 and ready to go and actually ready to go um and i guess again that's a kind of um a sign of, of of kind of how early players can develop physically now compared to compared to in the past um but fast forward to this season you know let's remember as well last season was his was his first as psg's out and out number one yeah, his first season he was sharing Avers, yeah sh it? sharing minutes with kaylon avas and last year he actually had a perfectly fine season, but there were he did have some hairy moments, mm -hmm. and I think people will remember those. But last year for post shot XG he saved just over four goals more than he should have. Still very decent, but was still more reliant, I think, on, on players missing chances against PSG. They they still ranked sixth for expected goals against in the league last year. Ended up conceding eight eight less than expected. So. He was a little bit reliant on, you know, on luck in terms of the finishing of, of opposition strikers. But this year he has been really the reason why PSG's defence, which again is is not one of the best in France. I think they're ranked seventh in Ligue 1 for expected goals against, wow. even though they're 12 points clear. Um, again, though, they've conceded eight less than XG predicted. But this time Donnarumma has saved nine goals, which is the best in Europe's top five leagues. Brilliant. He also has an 83% save rate, which is only second in Europe to Jan Sommer. Um, and yeah, Jan Sommer's had an amazing season, but Donnarumma has faced more high quality traffic than Jan Sommer. I think he's faced 15 more shots in quite a, a decent amount less game time. Um, and yeah, like just the, the quality of, of Donnarumma's um, shot stopping has just been really, really superb this year. He doesn't necessarily pop off in other areas of the game as much as some other goalkeepers, say Vicario, who, whose you know ability to sweep up is is absolutely superb and has been like you know key to the way that Ange Postecoglou's Tottenham play. So in a tactical way. You know, in some ways, I feel like Vicario is a more is a more well-rounded goalkeeper and has had a more transformative effect. But I just think, you know, we discount the fact that PSG, or it's easy to discount the fact that PSG only won Ligue 1 by one point last year over Lens. Two years earlier, they lost to Lille. Mm. Um, you know, in Ligue 1, like. And they it, lost big it, players in the summer, you know, it wasn't a guarantee that they were going to win the league. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, Messi, Messi and Neymar leaving. Like, I do think actually Enrique has quietly done a very, very good job at PSG this year, you know, avoided a potential slip up against Real Sociedad in the Champions League as well. They deserved that, very much deserved that win over two legs, you know, set up a really great, leg, yeah. that, 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 that tie against Barcelona in the quarterfinals, I think is going to be, like it could be the most entertaining tie of the entire course finals i mean it's a, it's a really good course finals in the champions league but um but i digress basically without donnarumma in this kind of form psg could have been in a lot more trouble this year you know brest have a better defensive record than them so do nice like it, you know they 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 weren't as far ahead as they as they have been so they weren't always as far ahead as they have been right now yeah. this season. Like it was looking like a more difficult season for them domestically earlier in the campaign. Um, and I think, you know, Donnarumma's consistency between the sticks has been really key to that. Love it. Love it. I think it's a very good shout. It's a very good shout. I did go for a guy you've already mentioned, though. I went for Jan Sommer. Yeah. And this actually, in many ways, in slightly differently to PSG, this maybe feels like a reward for Inter's defence, which mm. has just been exceptional this year. You know, losing Skriniar, losing Onana, Jan Sommer comes in. He'd had a difficult six months, to be honest, at Bayern Munich last year. Obviously, quite challenging circumstances coming in after Manuel Neuer had broken his leg. But at Inter Milan this year, he has been frighteningly good, to be honest, Jan Sommer. Admittedly, facing less traffic than Donnarumma, but mm. most clean sheets in Europe, highest save percentage in Europe, over, I think it's 84%, yeah. which is the second, no, sorry, the third time he's achieved over 80% in his career. He, he was remarkably mad. consistent yeah. at Gladbach. Um, and yeah, he saved 5xG. That's actually only joint 15th in Europe. So that does suggest that he's not facing as much traffic. But I wanted to get an Inter Milan representative into this video because I feel like up until a few weeks ago, up until that sort of shock defeat to Atletico Madrid, and it was a shock defeat, you know, Atletico Madrid didn't get a single shot on target in that first leg. You know, Inter Milan had been probably alongside Leverkusen the best side in Europe, at least in, in terms of performance in their domestic league. And now they've taken that blow, not even reaching the quarterfinals after reaching the final last year. And it feels like Inter maybe won't get enough respect that they potentially deserve this season because of that. But I think Jan Sommer's been absolutely excellent. <sighs> 
it's it's a very difficult one to decide. Why yeah. don't we leave it to the audience Let's leave every it to time? The audience, yeah. We don't have our judge Obber uh, yeah. this time, so why don't you guys decide in the comments? We'll, we'll stick we'll stick a, a pinned comment at the top saying like which position do you think? Yeah. Who who won in each position? And get voting people. Get voting. Get but voting. all I'm saying, Gian Luigi Donnarumma. Yeah, he's had a harder job. That's all I'm saying. That's he what has I'm saying. had a harder job. PSG's defense is is you know. It, it, it's not been good for a while. No. It's not been good for no, a while. No, absolutely not. Right, let's move on uh, to right backs. Cool. I'll kick off with right backs. I actually found right backs surprisingly difficult because well, Trent's, Trent's yeah. missed some games uh, and has played in midfield as well. You know, Hakimi probably hasn't been as spectacular as in previous years. Reese James obviously been injured. I think Carl Walker's taken a slight dip off in form as yeah. well. So interestingly, I went with a little bit of a curveball. I went with Ben White. Really? Of Arsenal. So, I, so, were you, so did you t tell yourself that you weren't allowed to do wing backs in that sense, or did you? Uh, it's a good point, yeah. actually, because my left back very much fits into okay, the wing all back right, category. Okay. All right, right. Um, so, I could have definitely gone down the Frimpong route, yeah. which is, I'm getting a it's feeling you maybe did. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, like but I also that. think Ben White's been absolutely <laughs> yeah. brilliant, to be honest. I also thought about Carl Walker Peters at Southampton, okay, which is a slightly on, rogue shout. Fourth uh, in the championship. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think Malo Gusto has also been excellent for Chelsea, to be honest, uh, mainly in the last three, four yeah. months. I think Pedro Porro has been very good for Spurs as he, well. He was up there for me, Pedro Porro. Yeah, like, but I want to award an Arsenal defence that I think has been absolutely excellent this year. You know, 24 goals conceded. Interestingly, that's only good enough for ninth best in Europe. But when you watch Arsenal, you're almost surprised that they're not higher up on that list, to be honest. And I think that does speak to the quality of the Premier League. In You know, there's so many teams that can cause damage. Everyone's got a sort of 30 to 50 million pound attacker in their squad. It's very difficult to keep clean sheets at the same rate as in other leagues. I think that's just a fact. But Ben White has just been absolutely brilliant, particularly in 2024. And what is even more remarkable is finding out that he's been playing with a knee injury all season. Crazy. Uh, and that was only because of Tommy Yasu being out that he's had to play so many minutes. I think he's over 3,000 minutes in all competitions now. And he's aggressive. He reads the game exceptionally well. He you know, links up with Saka really well. Maybe not as spectacular as this time last year, but I still think in, in 2024 he's been absolutely excellent and central to that run that has taken Arsenal to, well, puts them in a very good place to win their first title since 2003-04. You know, I wouldn't go so far as to say they're favourites necessarily. It's very difficult to call a favourite right now, but I think Ben White has been absolutely crucial. Yeah, and I think on top of that, it, yeah, to, to, you kind of hear... Here, kind of, I guess, testimony from yeah from his, his teammates about like how yeah how dedicated he is, what a kind of mentality monster he is, all this, that, and the other. You know, despite you know him having faced a kind of a, a weird amount of kind of media scrutiny over like his you know, love of the game, his love of the game, and you know the fact that he fell out of favour in the England camp, mm -hmm. and you know all these things. You know, there's, there's yeah, he has faced like quite a, a, a for, for a. For a footballer who is not, you know, a star striker or like a talismanic, necessary talismanic player in the side and, and someone who, you know, isn't particularly, I don't think, outspoken, mm. he has faced an awful lot of scrutiny yeah. in the media and, it, and, it, and that's the kind of thing that could break a lot of players, but like, you know, it hasn't and, you know, I think the reaction to... You know, I think the re the reaction among fans to yeah getting Qatar down to that new contract, I think yeah, does speak a lot about the kind of how important he is to Arsenal and to again step up after you know how good he was last year. Like, I, I yeah, I would I would have been more you know in some ways more tempted last year to to, mm. to I, I would have said maybe last year that he was the best right back in England. Is that a ma is that a crazy point? To, is that a crazy thing to think that I he was know. the best right it's back in England him last and Carl year? Walker probably like last year. I think he may well have been, uh, like especially in terms of his his creative output. Um, well, I'm getting the impression you went for a different style of right. I did back. go. I did go for a different style of right back. So yes, like again, like I think you have to shout out Kieran Trippier, who, despite you know a poor December, like has has j still been kind of Newcastle's main creator this year. Again, yeah, Pedro Porro, I think again a bit like Vicario has been has been sensational in, in terms of what Spurs can offer. Mm -hmm. Now, as a side, um, you know, along with the doggy on the left, Danny Carver Howe as well has you know had an uptick at, at Real Madrid. I'm not sure. Did you did you mention him already? I Apolog didn't. Apologies. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, there's there's my short term memory absolutely <laughs> off today. Um, but yeah, Jeremy Fringpong. I just think in terms of, and I'm kind of cheating here, like because his his defensive work, his defensive numbers have have really come down, like. He's barely even a defender at this point, but I just think to 
in terms of the way that he's adapted his game even more to suit Xabi Alonso this year has been really, really remarkable. You know, what is it? Eight goals and seven assists, which is the same output as he managed last year, but in 900 fewer minutes than he had in total last season. Um, his his expected goals and assists have gone up to 0 0.56 per 90. Um, he's fifth in Europe's top five leagues for progressive passes received in total, which just shows wow. just how important he is to that Bayer Leverkusen side. Like almost everything goes through him. And to, I think, take on that responsibility when Moussa Diaby has left, you know, it is, it's huge for such a young player. Um, and you have to credit Xabi Alonso, you know, for for helping him achieve that. But like, you know, it's a lot of work for him to do, you know, like Jonas Hoffman, amazing signing, but a very different kind of player to Moussa Diaby and also a player who, you know, is more busy in other areas of the yep. pitch. Like I was looking at Jonas um, Hoffman's he's heat map. everywhere. He, yeah. And to be fair, like Jonas Hoffman take, has, has played, a, you know, he, he, he covers a lot of ground in, on out wide he does but unlike Moussa Diaby who covered a lot of ground on the right and mainly kind of stayed there did did this go centrally a bit but generally speaking was his main weapon was attacking from that right side mm -hmm. and right half space um yeah Jonas Hoffman is is you know all over the pitch as well and you know again Bayer Leverkusen they're averaging 10 percent more possession in games than they were last year. That's a huge, you know, that's huge stylistically. That's a massive thing. Whereas, you know, Jeremy Fringpong broke into that Bayer Leverkusen side originally from, you know, them being quite a clever pressing side and a clever counter-attacking side. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you have to give massive credit for, to him for adapting in that way. Nice one. I... I'm tempted by Frimpong, to be honest, but we'll leave it to the viewers. We'll yes. leave it to the viewers. That's, right. that's a tough one, isn't it? Because you have to... It's so different stylistically. They're, they're, yeah, I think there'll be you know, ideology about yeah. right back will come into this one. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the comments say. Right, let's move on to centre-back. I think this is quite straightforward, to be honest. Yeah. Mikey, do you want to kick us off? I mean, shall I quickly make the case for Saliba? I think, sure. I think we. I think we can... You know, deserves a mention. I think he deserves a mention, and similarly to Ben White, I think you have to give this Arsenal defence a lot of credit. And a lot of Arsenal fans, sorry to interrupt, a lot of Arsenal fans online, in particular, yeah. have started a sort of movement that actually Gabriel Gabriel's is their the best one. player. It, what the best player best overall, player best player squad. in the squad. I mean, Gabriel. I think Gabriel has improved massively on last year. Mm. I think he has stepped up, and I think the the difference between kind him and Saliba free these days. Yeah, he is completely error free, and also has popped up with. Um, well, one important goal against Liverpool, some less important goals around, but generally speaking, his also like Arsenal are now the best set piece team in in England. Um, you, there's probably an argument that they're the best set piece team in Europe, even. Yep. And Gabriel is always a threat from set pieces, even if he's not necessarily scoring from set pieces, which which he has done four times this season. <laughs> but but even when he's not scoring, he is still providing. You know, he's still you know someone's still got to pick him up, and that creates space for you know someone else to 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 get on the end of chances. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I think you can make the case for Gabriel as well, actually. Like maybe you'd even I don't know with a strong case. I think just. I think just Saliba's solidity and his ball playing ability and, uh, you know, he's quite similar to Van Dijk and that just like nothing really gets past him. I think it's only really him and Van Dijk who have, I think in Europe's top five leagues, basically, they have been dribbled past the least. Yep. Um, and Saliba's I'm intrigued face. to see how he gets on against Bayern because I actually thought yeah. Saliba in the second leg against Porto, mm. first poor game I've seen him have in ages. Yep. Respect for that consistency, but it was a poor game by him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and yeah, especially at uh you know at the alliance you know Asheron, yeah. probably against europe's most like informed striker yeah like who picks up musiala like how do you deal with sane as well depending on which side he plays on like yeah there are there, there, yeah there will be tests but the fact remains is that arsenal in terms of like giving up chances they are you know i think their xg against in in england is in the Premier League is 18. Man City is next on 27. Like they just don't give up chances. And Saliba, Crucial you know, to that. is is the is the the organizer in that back line. Um, his ability to step out of the back line and not affect it is is really you know remarkable. Um, but yeah, I think you could you could make very similar arguments for Gabriel in terms of like what they you know what they as a pair do. But I guess that's where. I guess that's where Van Dijk wins out is that just he's had a, a much more revolving cast around him that Liverpool defence in general I know him and Canate are a great back line but 
are a great partnership, but Carl Arce has not always been there. You know, you've had a Matip much younger season. So Matt about for Matt the season. For the season. You've had Kwanzaa coming in and Robertson Van Dyke's ability to get get the best out of Kwanzaa. You know, Joe Gomez on the left as well. Like it does kind of come back to Van Dyke. He is he is the he is the defensive leader in there. Um and, you know, the amount of times he's come up clutch as well. Let's remember this is his first season as club captain of Liverpool. You know, that last minute winner against um, Chelsea in the Carabao Cup final. Huge. The equaliser in the 4-1 uh, win over Luton. Also opened the scoring against Sheffield United back in December when Liverpool were in... They didn't you know, play probably, well that game. They, they were, yeah, they were having probably their worst period of the season. And, you know, those moments, do they do count a lot. And uh, this will be a bit of a running... Th- there are a few players in... in from my picks who have come up at crucial moments and have been really decisive in terms of where um, their team is this season. Cause that's, I think that's where the margins are yep. when, when you're looking at kind of players of the season. Like, uh, but like, yeah, I, I think it, it just has to be Van Dijk as, doesn't it? I, I just think he is the best, he's the best center back in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I agree, totally right? agree. I totally, yeah, I had Van Dijk down as well. I think he's won over 80% of his tackles. It's only been better than that once in that 18, 19 season where, According to the stats websites, you know, he had a 100% tackle success yeah. rate. It was, yeah, a remarkable season. Finished second in the Ballon d'Or this, that year. But in many ways, even though they won the Champions League that year, I think this has almost been the more impressive campaign for exactly those reasons that you outlined. The injuries to Trent, Robertson, Matip, Canate at different p- points. Like, I don't think... Even, like, Alisson being out behind Allison him. Alisson being out behind no, him. No, I no, no. Sander missing know, games as well. Like, we've Endo had... Endo and McAllister, like, splitting minutes as a, as a so defensive much, midfielder So many newbies him. in that side yeah. as well. And we've had, I think, in terms of Liverpool, we've had an Allison season, at least one Allison mm. season. We've had multiple Salah seasons. This feels like it's Van Dijk's season. Yeah. Uh, and I think he is probably the favourite for Player of the Year at the moment, to be totally honest. I mean, it will, just, yeah. it will go to the side, the player that wins the league. Uh, I don't inevitably. know if it will. I don't know if it will. But like, it, it, it may. It will like have after this title race, I think it definitely would. Mm. I'd also put Ollie Watkins firmly in that shout as well. But yeah. that's my slightly left field one. Um, let's move on to left wing back. Yeah. I think like Van Dyke, this is probably very easy or left back. But I kind of gave yeah. it away there. Alex Grimaldo signed on a free transfer mm. from Benfica. Eleven goals, fifteen assists. He is the second top scorer in the league for them behind Victor Boniface. They are unbeaten in, what, 38 games in all competitions, only five draws. They've scored over 100 goals. They are the most impressive side in, in Europe this season, I think. And there's a very decent chance that they win three trophies, which would be pretty remarkable Crazy. given that they spent up till, what, October last year fighting relegation. Um, I mean, so much credit has to go to Xabi Alonso, but the recruitment team last summer, I mean, maybe led by Xabi Alonso. I'm not sure who's in charge there in terms of their recruitment or how much power he has, but they just didn't miss last summer. Like Xhaka, Hoffman, uh, Boniface, of course, Grimaldo. And Grimaldo, he's not just a left wing back. He's popping up on the right. He's got a free role at times as a sort of 10. He scored some outrageous goals as well Mm. Uh, and big goals too as well. You know, he scored two goals against Bayern. He's got two assists versus Leipzig, uh, two assists versus Karabag in that second leg as well. Probably their most Mm. nervy moment of the season. And I put on Twitter last weekend that actually I think Leverkusen and are in their worst patch of the season um, like it was three red cards in a row in the Bundesliga prior to last weekend two four goals conceded against Carabag, two goals in each game but they are finding a way to get over the line and Grimaldo has been crucial to that and now I think there's what eight games remaining in the Bundesliga I think I read the other day they only need to win five to win the title mm-hmm. uh, of course because they're only t- they're 10 points clear yeah. so it feels like it probably should be. I don't want to curse it. I don't, I don't want to go any further. But yeah, Alex Grimalda is my left wing back or my left back. I think he's been yeah. sensational. Yeah, it's a strong, it's, it's hard to argue with. But I'm going to make the case for Federico DeMarco. Love it. I, I'm going to make the Was case for Federico DeMarco. Um, Federico DeMarco and Grimaldo's underlying numbers are incredibly similar this are season. Incredibly similar. So DeMarco, four goals and six assists. Okay, not on the level of Grimaldo. Um, but equally, Inter's, in terms of Inter's goal output, it is very reliant on Lautaro Martinez. That's where everything is funneled to. Having said that, DeMarco is involved in build-up basically as much as Grimaldo is at Leverkusen. He receives around the same amount of progressive passes a game. You know, plays a similar position, of course, um, but his expected goals and assists per 90 is actually slightly higher than Grimaldo's. Of course, OK, caveat this, Grimaldo's, you know, ability to score streamers is a huge part of his game and like is you know one of the reasons w- w- which sets him apart that but nevertheless i think I, but, but nevertheless i think demarco's ability to pick up 
positions in the box is, is better than Grimaldo's. We saw that against Atletico Madrid, you know, you know, on another night, that goal, you know, is decisive in Inter going through mm. to the quarterfinals. It, it, it wasn't to be in the end and it was such a chaotic game. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's, you know, a rare example of Inzaghi, you know, not, not getting it right. In, in, Subs weren't in good a, enough, were they? Yeah, yeah, like just not getting it right in a knockout game, which, you know, we very rarely see. Like I was so, I was really set on Inter being one of the favourites for the Champions League. And I think, you know, it, I think if they make it through to the quarters, then I think DeMarco's, you know, d the case for DeMarco is stronger in that sense. Yeah. But ultimately the team just weren't good enough on the night, but he's made more crosses than anyone else in Europe's top five leagues. Scored that amazing um, kind of cross goal as well. Yeah. You know, that long ranger. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. Um, God, that was was that towards the start of the season? I, I'm I kind of getting confused in time. I thought it was right sort of October time. Yeah. I don't know. It's all a bit um, of a blur. All a bit of a blur, at especially the today. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I just think, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think across the last two years, Demarco has been for me best left back, best left back, or best wing, at least best left Ooh. wing back in Europe. I think Teo Hernandez think deserves a shout there as well. Teo Hernandez deserves a shout, but just hasn't been quite as influential, and, and Milan just haven't been at the same level this I've season consistently at least i think we also had to shout out alfonso davis i think in terms of ability there is no question that alfonso davis is the best left back um in europe but um just his numbers just don't quite match up to demarco's and grimaldo's i don't think um he will get there he's still only 22 which is crazy to think um, demarco no no alfonso i davis. was about to say right. uh, but demarco's still only 25 yeah, I was gonna it's say. crazy that grimaldo's still only 27 by the way like i just thought i just thought he was, he was pushing 30 for so long um but anyway like you fought valiantly you made a good case I, I have fought valiantly there but i think also Grimaldo. i think another thing to you, you speak about grimaldo like stepping up at a time when um you know leverkusen have you know needed players to step up they haven't been you know as a team quite as faultless like you know since that boniface injury he i think out of nathan teller's five goals that he scored in the bundesliga in he's only made three starts nathan teller and yet has five goals um Grimaldo set up three of them. Like I think, you know, that again. Are you switching sides now? Are you making well, a case no. for Grimaldo? Well, it was just part of my. I had I had case for both. I had <laughs> case for both, and it was it was who you, who you picked. But I just think I think it's close, man. I don't, I don't think it's as um, you don't think it's as done deal as, I do. as 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 you do. I think I think Demarco has to has to get a shout here, and again, like Inter need representation in this side. I love it. Love it, guys. Yeah. Let us know. I think that is a very a, a case well fought but I'm still going with Grimaldo on that left-hand side. Right, let's move on to our defensive-minded midfielder. I think this could get spicy. I'm going with Granite Jacker. Oh, I'm going with Granite Jacker. You, you know, it's a little bit oh. generous to call him a defensive midfielder in this side because obviously Palacios or Robert Andrick does most of the defensive yeah. work in that, in that Leverkusen midfield. But in terms of a passing metronome, in terms of a controller, mm. I don't think anyone's had a better season than Xhaka. Most passes completed in the entirety of Europe. Most passes into the final third completed in the entirety of Europe. Most progressive passes completed in the entirety of Europe. He's also created 37 chances, which is the pretty, same as Jude great. Bellingham. It's the same as Cole Palmer. The That's guy amazing. is doing it all from midfield. And he's popped up with crucial goals too. Uh, that absolute screamer against Mainz a couple of mm. weeks ago. And then he did that sort of hobbling celebration, uh, which worried me because uh, this guy needs to finish the season for Leverkusen and get the props he deserves because, you know, he was outstanding for Arsenal last year and he's carried that form and potentially even played better than he did last year in a new role as well, in a system that I think he's probably played in that system for Switzerland a few times, but he definitely hasn't played at a club level for yeah. a long, long time. Uh, I think he's been absolutely brilliant. Worthy shouts, uh, I know who the player you're going to mention, I can imagine who. Pascal Gross has been excellent at yeah. Brighton. Uh, yeah. Alex Garcia of uh, Girona as well mm. deserves a shout, but I think you're going to go slam dunk on the big name. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, Hakan Shananoglu to bring it back to Inter has been brilliant. I, I had a suspicion you might have gone for him. Um, he's been absolutely superb. I mean, Declan Rice at yep. Arsenal. Again, like one of the big shouts for player of the season. Um, he has been excellent as well. But I do think, and it's the boring shout, but I think it's the right shout. I think Rodri. <laughs> I just think Rodri is the best. It, it, it's still clearly the best defensive midfielder in world football. Yes, he plays in a really dominant Man City side, but you know, in that in that kind of first half of the season, City, you know that that record where you know whenever Rodri was out, they'd lose. Like it, it's true, man. Like that City side just collapsed without Rodri. I don't. I don't think you know. I think City without Rodri 
would would be some way off Arsenal and Liverpool right now. I think he he's been that important to them. You know, you talk about clutch moments from Xhaka, you know, the late equaliser against Chelsea, the late goal away to Chelsea in the four all that nearly wins them the points if um who is it who makes the stupid challenge that leads to the Cole Palmer penalty oh, in, in stoppage time? Yeah. Um, is it Nathan Ake? Might, might be. Maybe, been, maybe yeah. Ruben Diaz, actually. Yeah. Anyway. I, think, I think it might have been Ruben Diaz, actually, but here we go. Okay, cool. Yes, you know, abuse us in the comments for that, um, <laughs> you know, lack of lack of uh, memory and knowledge. Um, but the late, Tough win, on hangover. Yeah, the, the late winner against Sheffield United back in September, the opener against Sheffield United in the return, like, he, he pops up, doesn't he? Obviously, you know, we're going back to last season, the winner in the Champions League final. But... Um, Six goals and five assists from defensive midfield. Um, yeah, that's more goal involvements than Bernardo Silva has managed this season. Okay, albeit Bernardo Silva has had a quieter season, but is still, you know, a really crucial attacking mm. asset to City. Um, like, also, I think, again, it's a little bit like the Van Dijk argument, I think. Man City's midfield as a unit has been much much worse this season than last season. Like Gundogan, a massive, massive loss. And they didn't replace him well enough with Kovacic and, and, and Nunes. I know we've talked about that a lot, but he's had a revolving cast of players around him, Rodri. Um, and in a system, you know, that, you know, the way that City have evolved over the last couple of years, that role that Rodri plays actually, I think is a lot harder. I know he doesn't necessarily have, you know, he, he for example, he makes t less tackles and interceptions a game than, than Declan Rice does at Arsenal. So it's not necessarily the defensive responsibility, but the having to keep control in a in a system which is a little bit more transitional and a bit more physical, I think is a t is a tougher job than keeping control in a in a super slick, like high high possession side. Um, which okay, I say like City are still that, but nevertheless they have been troubled more defensively mm. um, this season and. You know, to have that revolving cast of Kovacic, who you know hasn't been at his best this season, Akanji, who he's no I, I, think, I, think, I think I think he's a good defender, but I, I I don't think he's particularly good in that midfield role. John Stones has played there on occasion as well, and then Nunes alongside him as well. And then you've had a bit of a revolving cast of kind of Bernardo Alvarez, Foden, KDB ahead of him. Sometimes been you, a lot of changes. So, you know, sometimes you you've down. got you know sometimes you've got four midfielders playing an attacking role and just Rodri behind them. Like it's a really really tough job, um, and he has still remained you know, numbers wise in terms of his ability to control games, in terms of his defensive responsibility, I, I just think he's still been outstanding. Mm. Um, and I think more so than the other midfielders that we've mentioned in this conversation, I think Rodri is the most important. Um, I think Xhaka, yeah, Xhaka has been amazing, don't get me wrong. And like him leaving Arsenal has meant that they've had to completely change the way that that midfield operates, like 100%. Xhaka really, really important, but I still feel like take Xhaka out of that midfield at Leverkusen and there's still other ways. There's, there's still other ways in which they can um, remain dominant. You know, they've got like, you know, the two most dominant wing backs in, in the league. Like that that forward line has been, you know, brilliant. You know, Florian Wurtz's kind of ball progression is, is, is excellent as well as his attacking play. Like... Take Outstand Roger out, they out, lose. Out, outstanding Jacker, but yeah, like I just think take Rodri out, and and it's fatal for Man City. It really, really Wolves, is. Villa, um, Spurs. I think you missed all of them. Yeah, actually, I've so got a killer stat for you that kind of completes your argument. To be honest, okay, I, I'm kind of stabbing go. myself in my front here. Yeah, but he's 60 games unbeaten for Man City. Insane. He hasn't Insane. lost since February 2023. Over a year. Mad. Guess the side he lost to then. Tottenham. Yes. Uh, well done, Mikey. Cool. All right, sweet. No there. flies on I'm not, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm. You know. I'm still there. You're I'm still yeah. there. I'm <laughs> not, I'm not out yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that was a very good case. I think whoever you vote for in the comments, I don't think either of you, you're not wrong, whichever yeah. one you go also for. Also give us your shout, because I think that is a that was a really tough position. Like I think there's really good shouts for the likes of Channel Log Glue and Rice and that as well. So if you do disagree with us and have your own shouts, let us know in the yeah, comments. Yeah, get at us. As well. Get at us. Right. Attacking midfielder. Oh, I went with Jude Bellingham. Yeah. It's a bit of a tap-in, to it's be honest. It's a tap-in, man. <laughs> He's kind of played up front at different points, hasn't he? But for a debut season at Real Madrid, I, I don't think we've ever seen anything like yeah. it, to be honest. I mean, you look at the last two Ballon d'Or winners at Real Madrid, Karen Benzema, had some real ups and downs at Real Madrid. You look at Modric, he was voted their worst signing of the season halfway mm. through his first year. Jude Bellium, 20 goals and nine assists in 31 games. It's arguably the greatest debut season of every Real Madrid player ever. 
Like it is probably right up there. I can't remember. What, I think Cristiano Ronaldo like, hit the ground Ronaldo, running. Pretty hard, Ronaldo but. hit the gra- ground running, but wasn't. I, I, I don't know. I guess maybe didn't take the world. Uh, didn't take as much surprise as as Bellingham, um, and also Ronaldo's first season, Barcelona just swept the floor anyway yeah. in the league. So wasn't playing in a, in a. Wasn't making as a size of an impact for a team that's probably going to win the league. Um, if he has a good tie against Man City, I think there's a very good chance he wins the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. I think that is a very legitimate chance. You know, mm. he has had big Depends impact. on the Euros as well, doesn't does it? It does. I mean, the Euros will have a huge say as well, of course. But responses, his response in big games, he's contributed a goal in every Champions League game he's played. He scored a brace against Barcelona at a crucial point when the yeah. title was a lot. Obviously, it was early on in the season, but it was very tight at that particular moment. Big goals against Girona, uh, Girona as well. I think he's got three against Girona this season. They've been Real Madrid's main rivals for much of the campaign. I think he's also scored against Real Betis, who you know are up there amongst the sort of fourth to eighth best teams in, in Spain. I think he's been absolutely sensational. Um, top scorer in La Liga, played in a variety of different roles. Yes, he's played a lot up front, but for the attacking midfielder slot, it's got to be Jude. Although it, I think you can make a very good case for another Leverkusen player. Yeah, Florian Verts for yeah. sure is up there. Like I think he's he, he's just mesmerising, isn't he, Florian Verts? Like his goal on the weekend, just another absolute you know absolute beauty um javi simons as well like in terms yeah. of like in terms of like concentration like of of the goals that he scored being like just Otherworldly. absolute like all time <laughs> like javi simons oh my god the concentration of his goals being just absolutely like you know worldies this season also i think honorable mention to turn coop miners who mm. you know the latest in you know the long list of players who have been kind of like you know been just juiced, been up given, ju- juiced up by Gasparini, man. <laughs> like, who knew that he was going to suddenly just be this number ten? Like, he's just, you know, he, he's he's on the market at, this summer as well. He is on the Says market. Says he wants to move. Says he'll yes. put up with the Premier League weather. Mm. What, sorry? He said he'll put up with the rain. Is that what, is that what he actually said? Yeah. Oh, so he is searching, isn't he's he? He's searching. It. Arsenal um, swap out party, oh, bring in Coop Miners. Yeah, that would be that would be very interesting. Mm. That would be very very interesting. But I think where Bellingham wins it as well. It's not only yeah, it's not only just the sheer numbers. It's not only the fact that he's just like such a joy to watch and has, you know, stepped up at the Bernabeu at that age. And it's just you know everything's so precocious about him and he's a leader and everything like that. You know, all those buzz- buzzwords. But at the start of the season, when Real Madrid were not playing particularly well, he just came Carried up them. time and time again with those goals in in the last minute. Like if that doesn't happen, then Real Madrid. Are base, are, are, you know, I think they're probably you know maybe one or two points ahead of Barcelona at this stage of the season, not eight points behind mm. them. Like again, those contributions crucial to Real Madrid being in the position they are right now. Like it's not been, it's not actually been a vintage season for Madrid. They've t- faced you know the injury troubles that they've had. Um, you know, yeah, like faltering form, even though they've not lost a, a La Liga game since September. Like, yeah, like you, I mean, you, you kind of already said it, but Bellingham has, yeah, ha, has been so clutch for them, and has, um, and yeah, how quickly he's, you know, I think it's worth also pointing out as well. the pressure he was under as well. Like a hundred million euro signing, it's it's yeah. a different at Real Madrid, the most probably talked about club in the world. New role. Playing, playing a completely role. new role, never, role. Never played his career. you know, they've just lost Karim Benzema. They're probably well, best player of the last since Ronaldo's left, yeah. obviously. Um, and you, you're signing for that money. There's that level of expectation. It is completely different, you know, in a refurbished Bernabeu, whereas Florian Verts is playing in front of, what, 30,000 at the Bay Arena every week and in yeah. a side that have been phenomenal, but no one, ex- no one, there's a different level of pressure. No huge, one expected he, Leverkusen to, to challenge for three trophies this year. And, and it's been an amazing run, but I think Jude has to get it for, for yeah. responding in that. For sure, man. Scrutiny. Like yeah, and it's like, it's not even just, yeah, he's the top goal scorer in La Liga, but he also makes 7.4 progressive passes a game. Like, he covers so much ground. Brilliant. Like, he spends a lot of time in his own half, like, pick it, you know, kicking off attacks, um, winning possession. Like, yeah, he just, yeah, we, you can't you can't argue with him, I don't think. I don't Is think it? anyone will in the comments, will they? Right, Mikey. Um, let's move on to right wing. Okay, cool. I thought this was really difficult, actually, to be honest, right wing. It's I think you can make two, a lot of case. It's between, it's between two players, though, right? Who did you go for? Well, it's between Saka and Salah, right? Interesting, no. Have you not gone for either of those players? No. I think it has to be Saka or Salah. Okay, I, I'll be interested to hear you who say. Maybe, maybe, I've, I've, maybe I've completely blindsided myself and like just forgotten that whoever no, you've no. got exists. It's really, really tough. Like Salah has the second best record for expected goals and assists per ninety in Europe behind, behind Kane. Kane. Like you can't. It's hard to argue with that. I think. It might, you know, people will probably say it's recency bias in the comments. 
but I just think Saka's really, really stepped up in the second half of the season at a time when Arsenal have like put themselves forward as, you know, as much more legitimate to high school contenders I think than they were in the first half of the campaign. I think really, to be honest, it comes down to availability. Saka's just been on the pitch more. He's just been on the pitch more. He receives more progressive passes than anyone else in Europe. Like, like. He's a master he, he, like, it, it, it's, got, it's got to, you know, he's so good that it's got to the point where people are saying that he's not as good as everyone says he is. But he is, like, he is that good. <laughs> like, like he is that good. Like, you sound kind ev- of exasperated. Ev- everything goes through him. Again, like, you know, yeah, like Xhaka leaving Arsenal last year, he was so important to their progression up the pitch. Saka's had to take more responsibility in that sense um, with Xhaka leaving. Like, his numbers, you know, in terms of his shot numbers, you know, he, he he's... Uh, fourth for key passes per 90 in Europe's top five leagues. Salah is a bit off him in that sense. His his shot numbers and shot in the box numbers are around the same as Salah. He's second, basically he's second in Europe to Salah among right wingers. Um, he's seventh for passes in the penalty area. Like yes, his underlying um, kind of chance creation and you know his underlying kind of XG numbers aren't on the level of Salah. But I think he does more. He does more work in build up than Salah. He clearly mm. does a lot more work in build up than Salah. Um, and like even even at points this season, yeah, I, I guess you know you can pinpoint a few games this season where he's been off it. But when he's been on it, he has been Arsenal's most important player, um, at least in an attacking sense. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's where he wins it. Okay, there's someone at, like Leroy Sane is also in the conversation, but he's split minutes between the right and left. So that that's where he lost out for Slightly me. Slightly faded recently as well. Slightly faded. Like he had an ama- such an amazing first half this year. Um, did we mention Musiala as well in the in the attacking midfield we conversation? Didn't we didn't, but he, he should get a shout out there, um, especially recently. He's just been absolutely absolutely mesmerising. Well um, but yeah, I don't know what there more there is to say about Saka. I feel like that. I feel like I had more to say about Saka, but I, I think, think he sums it up very well. Yeah. He's a beautiful player, beautiful player. But I'm going for a guy who's been more consistent this year. I'm you going go for Cole Palmer? I'm going for Phil Foden. Oh, Phil Foden on the right. I'm okay. playing him on the right. It's a little bit of a cheat yeah, code because okay. he hasn't played yeah. that, that much this year. But I wanted to. I wanted to get him in. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. You do have to get him in somewhere, to be fair. Pretty so much from the didn't, like, pretty much him. from the get go. Yeah. I think he's been like Salah. Ha- S- um, Saka, sorry, had a very slow start to the year. Salah's missed a fair few games with injury. Phil Foden most minutes played out of any City player. 18 goals, 10 assists in 42 games. I think he's been brilliant. I think only Haaland's contributed more league goals than him for City. He's also got four goals and three assists in the Champions League. I, th- I can see him having a really big impact against Real Madrid. Uh, I think he's been absolutely faultless this year, to be honest. Big goals in big games as well. That hat-trick against Brentford when they were trying to close the gap mm-hmm. in that rearranged game. Three goals against Man United this season. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. It's already his best ever goal-scoring season. There's still two months remaining. <sighs> I think there's, there's shouts, obviously, for Saka, there's shouts for Salah, there's shouts for even Lamine Yamal probably deserves a shout out here. Mm, true. But for consistent performance, I'm, I'm going with Phil Foden. Again, I think it, it is so tight for player of the year in the Premier League this year. There's, no, there's so many players that have had outstanding years, but there's not been one sort of otherworldly one. But Foden's right in there as well with Rice yeah. and Van Dijk. I didn't even put Salah on my nominees the other day, which took mm. a lot of heat from, from, yeah, I saw that. from yeah. Liverpool fans. And maybe it was a bit of an oversight, but the six I had down, there's some exceptional candidates. It's, it's, it's tough with Salah, isn't it? Because it's like, it's not been his best season by his standards, but even if it's not been his best season by his standards, it's, been, probably it's still, still good been a worldly season yeah, by my, my still good enough to be standards. Maybe. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I, like Phil Foden, amazing season. But like the recent performance against Man United was remarkable in a game which I don't think City were like Man United were really bad in that second half. City overall, I don't think were particularly impressive in that game. But Phil Foden took it by the scruff of the neck. Um, so like he has become, you know, the main man for City. Of course, that large but, um, debate from the yeah, summer. That huge debate. He's, he's also um, just sensational. To he watch is great. As well. But what I will say is like, who's the better right winger? Saka's the better right winger. Like, I, like maybe maybe Phil Foden misses out a little bit. Maybe Phil Foden is at a disadvantage because he's so versatile and has played, you know, really brilliantly in, in, a, in, a, in a few it's positions a this season. Yeah, like left. he has. Like, and I appreciate it. Like he does, he does deserve deserve it. But you're watching at home, like he's the better right winger. Saka is guys, get in the comments. Get in the comments. That's when I actually kind of want to win. That's when I want to win. I'm quite sold on Phil Foden getting included over Saka. As good as Saka's been in 2024. Right, let's move on to the left wing. I think this is a bit of a tap-in, to be honest. Vinicius Junior's had a great campaign, yeah. to be totally honest. But Kylian Mbappe, he's quite clearly the best player in the world, in my opinion. And, yeah. and he, more than any other player in the world, I think, can just flick a switch and turn it on in any instant. 
Uh, and given the fact that he's had quite a difficult 2024, Luis Enrique is now sort of moving on from him uh, and he's been on the bench a lot recently. He's still responded in, in huge games recently as well. That amazing performance against Nice in the Cup. I mean, Montpellier aren't the toughest opponent as well, but the quality of his goals at the weekend mm. he, it's just absolutely oh, sensational. Yeah, really. 24 league goals and five assists in 24 games in the league. Only 21 of those have been starts. I, I think he's been absolutely brilliant. He's already got six goals in the Champions League already. Playing Barcelona, you know, again, scored a hat-trick against them in the new Camp a few years ago. They'll be absolutely terrified, and, and rightly so. He is a frighteningly good footballer. And I think he's been brilliant. I think he's been the best left winger in the world this season, even though he's played a lot more centrally than, than in seasons mm -hmm. past. And in a campaign in which Randall Colomani struggled, Gonzalo Ramos has struggled, Usman Dembele hasn't necessarily got the goal-scoring numbers that his performances deserve, I think Mbappe's been otherworldly. Yeah. It's really tough, man, because it's like, yeah, again, Mbappe's just split split minutes between centre forward and, and the left, and he has been amazing. I want to get him in this team somehow. Um, but who did you go for? Well, should we do some? I might do some honourable mentions yeah, first. Nico Williams, amazing season for Athletic. Um, I don't know, should I mention Anthony Gordon's been great for Newcastle yeah, yeah. Um, so in, in a Premier League sense? I, I, not on the level of the other players I'm mentioning here, but still, Kavicha Karatskalia, amazing calendar year so far. You know, I think he scored more. Um, I think he scored well when I was looking at it you know Vinicius has played this is the thing Vinicius has played at centre forward like this season in the front two generally speaking but he still takes up left wing positions aside from Vinicius Junior out of kind of specialist left wingers I think features the, the top scorer in Europe's top five leagues with 10 um, like his underlying numbers are actually looking a bit more impressive than last year as well mm. which is pretty amazing like I think he was he was just hitting more um, and Osimhen was putting away more chances last year, essentially, and putting away harder chances. Um, generally speaking, features has been great, but I do, I, I do need to make the case for Vinicius Junior. Like we talk about limited minutes and being so impressive in those limited minutes. Like Vinicius Junior, twelve goals in twenty La Liga appearances. Um, like his link up with Bellingham has been like yeah, transformative for that attack. I always get the um, impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he's yeah. one of your like favourite players in the world, like top, yeah. top three. Top top five for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, lo I, lo I love Vinicius Junior. I think it's because I made the argument last year that he was general uh, I, a better I, player I, than I, Mbappe, I, I, or not or a better, better player, but a better left winger. I still prefer him as a left winger because he's just more of a classic winger yep. than Mbappe. Um, he scored two more goals than last season in thirteen hundred fewer minutes. Um, again, has stepped up at a really crucial point this season. Got that brace against Valencia, didn't he? That brace against Osasuna, like. He, he's you know helping keep the pressure off from Barcelona. During, you know, it scored a hat trick against them in the Super Copa final. You know, came back from injury with such gusto. Like I think, I don't know. Like I just, I just think he's been absolutely sensational. Um, so yeah, again, I think maybe like you know his injury maybe counts against him a little bit uh, compared to Mbappe. I think Mbappe, like, I, d I don't know, like, maybe just vote, maybe just vote in the comments right now because I'm, there's a case for Mbappe to be the centre forward, I think, in terms of his, um, in terms of basically everything that you said, Dukes. Like, I think if, you know, it's like, it would be a bit of a fairy tale for him to leave PSG and w finally win the, the Champions, Champions League. League. Like, they're on He's got the a lovely run on that side. He, sorry? He's got a lovely side of the draw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they are on the best side of the draw. What is it? Like they play Dortmund or... Who Atleti. Is, or Dortmund or Atleti in the semis. If they beat Barcelona, then obviously will play like, you know, probably the best team in the competition in the final if they get there. But... I can I can see him I can see him doing it against Barcelona, like you know Barca aren't playing at the camp now this season that home advantage won't count as much um, as it has in previous years, um, you know like I, I I don't know I think there's a case for him at centre forward as as great as Harry Kane's been I think Harry Kane probably does win it mm. but I just think Mbappe yeah Mbappe is just the best player in the world like the, the again like just the goals that he is able to score in a PSG side that again like like we were saying earlier with Donnarumma like this PSG team is still a bit of a work in progress and what do they sign 13 players in the summer something like that yeah like yeah he's just he's just so clutch man he's just so clutch and he's 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 going to top his best ever goal tally for a season in a season in which like the speculation around him has been at boiling point yes he you know that that's that's slightly his fault like he does create that like speculation around mm. him in terms of like his conduct and in terms of his you know 
consistent or his, or his entourage yeah, his, his, yeah. His, yeah in terms of like what what yeah in, ter in terms of the power structure around him and the constant flirtation with Real Madrid that's been going on over the last few years like you do have to take responsibility for that but to but to be able to take on that responsibility away from the pitch um and not let it affect your performances on the pitch I think has actually gone a bit under the radar over the last few years like Mbappe, yes, there have been some big games in the Champions League where he's not necessarily, you know, shone as much as he should have. But generally speaking, he has been an incredibly consistent performer over the last five years, mm. you know, amid all of that, um, amid the, you know, social media kind of onslaught that top, top players have to deal with um, in general. Um, and all that conversation about him not be, you know, he, he'll never be, you know, he'll never be considered the best player if he's, you know, if he's playing in Liga. Like all of that stuff, you know, does, you know, does have an effect on players. Mbappe has been incredibly resilient in terms of just being able to consistently turn up. So, um, so I feel like I'm blowing Mbappe's trumpet a little bit too much there because no, um, no. he does annoy a lot of people. Um, but nevertheless, uh, yeah, I think there's a case for him. But Kane's record is ridiculous. Kane, Kane's record is ridiculous. Lord Harold, it's going to be frustrating if England don't win the Euros this summer, which. Pff, more than more than likely that they don't. Well, this There's is so a, many well, great well, sides. Well, this, you know, you talk about the Ballon d'Or. Like, if it's a, uh, well, I don't know, Bayern don't win the league this year, do they? But yeah, maybe it's not between Kane and Mbappe. But I, I do. I'm saying it, man. Like England France final. That's what we that want. Would be epic. That's what we want. And, that then, and, and then it may be up to, and then it may be a shootout between Mbappe and Bellingham or Mbappe and Kane for the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, I mean, we don't really need to touch on Kane's goal scoring record. The fact that he does have an outside chance of breaking Lewandowski's goal scoring record the fact that he's set a new record for, for most goals in a Bundesliga season as a debutant like everyone knows this the fact that he got six goals and three assists in the Champions League most goal contributions in the competition but actually when the season was really hanging on a knife edge in that second leg against Lazio mm. responds with a brace up. R rumors that Tuchel was going to be fired off that game if they lost and he responded with a brace and Bayern ever since then have actually been in ridiculously good form mm. um, and I think Arsenal fans, beware. He's got a great record against you guys Huge. and he's he's really oh, chomping at the bit so right good. now. It's, it's going to be epic. so good at the Emirates, man. Oh, frustrating oh though. God. Kickoff is exactly the same time as Man City Real Madrid. I think I watched I watch Bayern. Bayern. I watch Bayern. Is, it, is that the first leg at, at the first Emirates? First leg is at the Emirates, I believe. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. got, got Bayern don't have away fans as well, which is quite a crucial yeah. factor for um, crown trouble. I think yeah, they sent shame. flares onto the pitch. Guys, that is our rundown of the best player in the world in every single position. But we want to hear from you guys. You best guys player are, of the season as well, not just best player in the world. Like the best, sorry, like the best, best player in the season, season yeah. based on this season. Crucial. Well, yeah, like yeah, uh, get your thoughts know, about that, that in the comments down below. Uh, really do, actually. We want as much debate as possible. Let's get some positivity in there. Let's, you know, let's get the debate going. Let's get the debate flowing. Uh, anything to add, Mikey? No, I think that's it, really. Yeah, yeah I think that's it. I it, really enjoyed this episode. It, it was, was really fun. good fun. Really good fun. We should get drunk more often uh, <laughs> the night before. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.